Yes, welcome back to the lab. And this week we're looking at Movat's pentachrome, which despite appearing quite complicated, is actually a combination of Alcian Blue for staining acidic mucus substances, an elastin stain, and we're using Verhoff's hematoxylin today. And then finally we exploit the principles of trichrome staining. So as usual, we have taken our sections down to water already by passing the slides through firstly two changes of xylene and then through graded alcohols. And the sections that we've got are primarily from the upper esophagus. So looking at stage one, which is to stain for acidic mucose substances, we begin by rinsing the slides in 3% acetic acid, which happens to be the solvent that the Alcian Blue is prepared in. So it doesn't need long, just a quick rinse, and then we go into the Alcian Blue, and this is actually at pH 2.5, in order to stain up both carboxylated and sulfated mucose substances. So after 20 minutes, we rinse that off. And it's generally a good idea to give that a, a pretty good rinse. So I'll just transfer the slides over to the rack and just give it a bit of a shake. And then because I think it's always very useful when learning these techniques to monitor the results at each step. We'll just dry the back of the slide and put that onto the microscope and see what we can see here. So even while wet, the optics are not ideal, but we can make out there, there's some uh, prominent uh, mucus glands there in this area of the, the, the upper esophagus and some very nice blue staining there. Okay, now, <laughs> it's at this point that I perform an experiment. Many of you will come across techniques for MOVATs where it emphasizes converting Alcian Blue into Monostral Blue, which apparently is a more stable form of the dye. So the way that's done, traditionally, is by treating the slides, in this case for 45 minutes, but there are some protocols that uh, that indicate up to a couple of hours. Um, but I'm curious as to whether that's really necessary in this laboratory, and I'll come back to the reasons why later on. So after those 45 minutes, we'll rinse off the alkaline alcohol, and so now we've actually got six slides there. Three that have been left in the water bath for 45 minutes, and then the other three that have had that alkaline treatment. And again, this is widely commented on in, in various textbooks of histochemistry as a way to stabilize the Alcian Blue as monostral blue. Following that, we can go to step two, essentially, which is staining for elastin fibers. Now, there are techniques that have used other methods, including orsine, but on this occasion, we're using the Verhoff's hematoxylin mixture. And as I've shown in my videos, which um, look specifically at the Verhoff's elastin staining method, I like to do this upside down in a Petri dish just because of the high alcohol content and therefore can reduce the amount of precipitation of the stain onto the specimen. So. Normally I give that 20 minutes for a, a standard elastin stain, but the MOVATS protocol generally does that for 10, so that's what we're doing today. Finally, after 10 minutes in the Verhoff's hematoxylin mixture, give that a rinse off in, in tap water. And it's probably just going to be easier here just to leave them on the rack, I think. It's a bit too fiddly getting the slides into the rack sometimes. You notice that within each of those petri dishes there's a small toothpick if you like and that's just to keep the slide elevated to allow the elastin stain to to fit underneath so just transfer each of those slides 
over to the rack now. They've had a had a good rinse. You can see they look very dark, which is typical at this stage. Just give that a bit more rinse. And now let's go have a look at that one under the under the microscope. Okay, so everything looks a bit different to before. We can see that our lovely bright blue ashen blue is now looking a very dark blue black. We can see background staining there of smooth muscle. There's some skeletal muscle down here in the upper esophagus. Uh, a lot of connective tissue is very dark. And you might just be able to make out some elastin peeking through um, in the connective tissue just here. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, it's quite dark and so we don't yet have the level of differentiation that we need in order to differentiate our elastin fibers from the surrounding structures. So the way that we differentiate is by treating with a 2% solution of ferric chloride and this does take a degree of patience and judgment so I'm just initially giving that as you can see a bit of a shake and then rinse that off and I'm doing this largely by eye at this stage I can see that I'm trying to get the band of connective tissue which in this particular specimen is a bit easier to see so the band of connective tissue that is I guess sitting between the outer layer of muscle which is still a bit blue and the inner epithelial lining Okay, so now that we've given that a treatment, and you can see it's relatively brief, we can make out now better contrast. So there's just some evidence of dark elastin fibers. You can just start to see them poking out, and there's a really nice arteriole over here on, the, on that side, and yeah, there's a nice internal elastic lamina. So arteries are your friend when you're trying to optimize your staining for elastin fibers because of that internal elastic structure. So I'm going to give that a bit more just to try and see if we can improve that contrast. Importantly we don't want for the connective tissue that is the collagen fibers to be completely clean because you'll generally get some further degree of differentiation later on as we go into other reagents. But let's just see if we can clean that up a little bit. So again, as you can see, it's not overly long. It's just the agitation, probably 10 seconds or more at a time. And here we go. So that's back to the same spot. And I think you'll agree with me that that's still got a bit of background there in the smooth muscle. But the elastin is quite clear, perhaps clearer than it was in the earlier slide. Um, and again, just still leaving a little bit of background color within the collagen and within the muscle as well. So that's getting there. In fact, on the camera here, it's actually looking at a point that I would probably normally stop, to be honest. But when actually looking down the actual microscope, the contrast is a little bit different. So I've actually given that a third treatment the camera is not really showing there much difference from what you saw after the second treatment which is a good sign that we've removed most of the background that we need to move and we've still left a little bit of background color which is good okay so now having done that um, five percent sodium thiosulfate the theory tells us that this is a way of neutralizing any remaining iodine that is present. So you may recall that iodine, Lugol's iodine, is a component of the Verhoff's mixture. And so this step is designed to neutralize any remaining iodine that's present within the section. So it's just put on for a minute, then we rinse that off in tap water. And then once again, let's go back to our microscope. 
just to see if that's made any overall difference. Not really. I think that looks fairly similar to what we just had before. Again, we can see some very clear elastin fibres there in that arteriole and we don't appear to have caused any other changes. The ashram blue is still looking quite nice within those mucous glands. Yep, that looks pretty good and still some elastin. So we're now up to step three. So essentially we've covered two parts of this Movat trichrome without too much drama. This final step is really about exploiting the properties of trichrome staining. And really this is about exploiting the differential partitioning largely by molecular weight of different acidic dyes. Now there's a lot of acidic dyes that you can choose for this, this type of stain. Um, I've actually had a look around the, the laboratory and what I could get my hands on was crystal scarlet which is a stain that you may recall we have used within the MSB stain for staining fibrin. And I've combined that with acid fuchsin in the proportions that you can see here, um, being a, a component of what we would normally use in a Masson's trichrome. So hoping to perhaps have some better staining of muscle. Okay, so I've left it on for two minutes because that's what we had in our, our protocol. Actually, our, our protocol was actually uh, a similar uh, mixture, but using bibric scarlet rather than the, the crystal scarlet. But let's have a go and see if we can get the crystal scarlet combined with the acid fuchsin to give us the outcome that we're looking for. Okay, so you can see those slides are quite red. So I'm here, I'm just giving the slides a, a rinse in deionized water. In fact, you'll notice I gave the slides a rinse at the beginning. I just tend to do that as a habit for all trichrome staining. Just try and remove any excess stain that's lying around, I'm likely to come back onto the slide later on. Okay. So as you can see, I'm not overly worried here about losing this stain. It's not like, say, for a Van Giesen stain where you're concerned about losing your acid fuchsin from collagen fibres. I'm giving this a, a fairly good rinse, but certainly not putting it back into the, to the water bath. Okay, so just with that amount of rinsing, let's now have a look. Wow, okay, what have I done? <laughs> Everything's looking pretty red there. Well, I guess you'd expect that, um, given that that's where you start with trichrome staining. The idea being that you tend to overstain initially, loading up the structures throughout the, the tissue. So we can see some smooth muscle there, which is red, but gee, the collagen's pretty red too. Clearly where there's some adipose tissue there, it's looking quite clear. Gee, the skeletal muscle is also very red down there as well. So, as for other trichromes, we differentiate, that is we reduce the amount of stain. And PTA, you may recall, is the differentiator that we've used with the MSB stain. Um, generally, I don't usually need very much of it actually. In fact, often I'll skip this step. But for the Movats, I'm going to test the theory that we can be a little bit more rigorous. So as you can see here, I'm putting on a, a reasonable amount of PTA, sort of one to two mils there, and just giving those slides a bit of a shake. I'm not actually seeing much in the way of dye coming out, so I'm not overly concerned about the risk of over-differentiating. So my goal here is to essentially make the collagen clear or as clear as possible so that we can more clearly visually differentiate when we're looking at the slide, be able to more clearly differentiate between fibrin 
red blood cells and muscle, which we hope to leave red. And we would like the collagen fibers that are immediately adjacent to the elastin within the connective tissue to be nice and clear. Okay, so that's now probably had about five minutes. Just give that one a little bit more. As I said, I, I'm not overly concerned here because there doesn't seem to be a lot going on with this first application of PTA. So I'm just kind of feeling my way here, as I've said before. I don't do this every day, so I, I, uh, I don't claim to be an expert, but I'm following the method that we've got and exploiting what little knowledge I have of trichrome staining to see if I can get this where I want it to be. Okay, so, well, that's coming along. You may pick up there that there is a slight reduction in red within the connective tissue. We're getting a bit of a, a pale area there beneath the epithelium. Um, and if we look at the collagen in that connective tissue just beneath the epithelium, there's a bit of blotchy or patchy red staining that's still there. So I think we're on the right track. And I'll simply repeat that for another five minutes with some further PTA. And this is probably, to be honest, the most challenging part of this stain because it does require some patience, especially if you've had your slides already sitting for 45 minutes in the alkaline alcohol, you know, time is money and, you know, you, you're trying to keep things moving. So, you know, this could be a little bit frustrating. And one way to avoid that frustration is to reduce the initial staining time in whatever combination of red dyes that you're using. So you may recall I've stained for two minutes and actually in the end I've had to resort to using some PMA because I wasn't really happy with how quickly that was clearing. So on the right there is just the slides and the PMA. So after three rounds of PTA plus another five minutes in PMA, I'm now pretty happy with that. We can see that the skeletal muscle down below is quite red, which you can see there, that looks quite nice. The collagenous connective tissue is reasonably pale. There is evidence of some staining of smooth muscle within the wall of arterioles, which looks not too bad, and perhaps a bit of fibrin clot in the middle. So at this point, the GoPro battery ran out, so I had to whip out the iPhone, and here we're doing a rinse and deionize water, which is the next step, followed by a complete rinsing of the slides in 100% alcohol, not shown here, but I just filled up a Copland jar completely rinse the entire slide in preparation for going into the final stain, which is 1.5% tartrazine. Again, upside down because of the high alcohol content. The slides were then blotted like a Van Giesen at the end before dehydration, clearing and mounting. And here's the final outcome. So to begin, um, this is our standard protocol. So these slides had the alkaline treatment for 45 minutes. And at low power, that looks reasonably good. There's nice staining of the keratin within the epithelium there. There's a, a yellowy color to the collagenous connective tissue. And we can see a, a duct there for the mucous glands extending down towards the middle. So just looking at the connective tissue here under higher power, we can see there are some cell nuclei, which is a, a side effect of using the Verhoff's elastin stain with hematoxylin in it. We can see there's nice green-blue mucous substance, acidic mucous substance. And there's some evidence there of some quite strong elastin fibers cutting cross-section there towards the middle. So that's not too bad.
surface looking a little bit further afield there's a nice area of elastin there projecting down through the middle the mucose substance staining seems to be fairly even and we've got some lovely red stain of our skeletal muscle which is contrasting nicely with that yellow color a very light pale yellow of the tartrazine within the collagen perhaps a bit of a fibrin clot there in that little vessel and then some reasonable staining there of a blood vessel an arteriole with an internal elastic lamina some patchy staining of the smooth muscle cells perhaps it's a slightly thinner section again some punctate staining there for elastin fibers which have been cut in cross section some red blood cells which are nice and red and another artery over here so overall I'm pretty happy with that question is what what difference does it make if we don't treat the slides in the alkaline alcohol well here's the result this is another section of the same block which was just left in the water bath for 45 minutes and I don't know how you feel about that but I'm pretty happy with it I don't see any loss of the staining for mucous substances that still looks to be the same color as what we saw in the earlier slide again we've got some nice staining of keratin up in the epithelium this is often overlooked with trichrome staining but the the density of keratin and epithelial structures is quite similar to that of muscle so you should expect to see some nice red staining which we can see there so as you can see those glands look nice we can see some nice smooth muscle staining within that same arteriole or very similar to where we were before and some more elastin staining within the connective tissue so I'm very happy with these staining outcomes but it does raise the obvious question is treatment with alkaline alcohol actually necessary and in fact a colleague of mine from the University of British Columbia Ingrid Barter informs me that she doesn't even use this step so what else could be going on well if we look at the pH of our tap water it's around about neutral potentially maybe slightly alkaline maybe the slides being left for that period of time had the same effect still doesn't prove though that we need to leave it in there for 45 minutes in any case I'm pretty happy with the outcomes we can see here lovely staining of all the various features within the sections of the esophagus so hopefully that's clarified for many of you what often seems to be a very complex stain is actually really a combination of three staining techniques with a little bit of patience you should be able to get outcomes just as nice as this bye for now